Hi, this is Victoria Meyer. Welcome back to The Chemical Show. This week, I am speaking with Aaron Lee, who is the Global Vice President of Home Care and Industrial Cleaning for Univar Solutions. Aaron brings many years of experience in the home care and industrial cleaning industry, both in distribution and as a producer. Prior to joining Univar Solutions, he held several key leadership positions at Pilot, Velsicol, and Eastman early in his career. So Aaron and I are going to have a great conversation about what is going on in these industries. Aaron, welcome to The Chemical Show. Thank you, Victoria. Thank you for having me. I've been listening to The Chemical Show podcast for quite some time, and I appreciate the opportunity to talk about my business in the home care and industrial cleaning space. Great. I am always glad to have loyal listeners and glad to have you here. Let's start with your origin story. What's What got you interested in chemicals and what ultimately brought you to Univar? Yeah, you know, I hear the term origin story, and I think it's maybe because I have young kids, right? And I think about comic strips and some of the origin stories for Spider-Man. So mine's maybe not as exciting as being bit by a radioactive spider, but I do think I have a kind of an interesting origin story. My background um, is maybe not the same for a lot of the people in the chemical uh, distribution space. Um, I started off as actually a major in management and psychology at Loyola, Loyola University in Chicago. Um, so I um, started off in that space, had a little bit of background with chemistry, uh, organic chemistry, because I started off pre-med, probably with a, like a lot of students uh, in, in the college space, um, but quickly decided that's not the route I wanted to go. Um, so after I graduated from Loyola, I started looking for roles in pharmaceutical sales and didn't find a role in pharmaceutical sales. So I started with a company called Velsicle Chemical, and that's led to actually 22 years in the chemical industry. So I've moved around a little bit. After Velsicle, I started off with an inside sales role with them, moved into an outside territory that started with eight states and moved to 18. And then I really started to cut my teeth with Pilot Chemical, where I spent uh, 11 years working with them in different capacities. So I started off in a region in Chicago. They moved me to Cincinnati to manage their distribution sales. I did a few years managing the North American organization. And then when I finished with them, I was head of their global sales organization, and that's where actually I came up on a position with Univar Solutions. And it was really kind of interesting. I was at an ACI event in 2017 and I met with some of the leaders from Univar Solutions. And they were talking about what they were building within Univar that was different from chemical distribution. It was something called Organized to Win that was led by David Jukes, our CEO, and really looking at the different market verticals and specialty chemical sales. And they were building out a product horizontal, right? So a uh, product horizontal focused on surfactants and keelants. And that was my background at, at Pilot Chemical. And I said, this is really intriguing and a different look at chemical distribution. And so I was intrigued by the role. I started talking to some of their leadership a, a month later. And then by the end of February, I had taken a role with Univar Solutions. And for me, it was just a, a great opportunity to see the whole chemical industry and the partnerships that Univar Solutions had. I was part of a smaller space at Pilot Chemical with their surfactants, their biocides, their quat chemistries. But this gave me exposure to a much larger area within the chemical distribution space. And it's been, you know, a really rewarding journey at Univar Solutions. Being here six and a half years, I moved from Cincinnati down to the Woodlands, Texas, where I took on a role heading up the, the home care and industrial cleaning business in the U.S. And based off the success of that uh, industry, we grew our business to 70 plus professionals focused on home care and industrial cleaning, just in the specialty space. That's sales, that's marketing, that's technical support, uh, that's product management. We have seven global solution centers where we do technical support for our customer base. And so it's gen genuinely been just a real rewarding opportunity uh, at Univar Solutions. And we continue to grow in this space. It's been a lot of fun. That sounds good. I mean, it's it's actually interesting, you know, to go from pre med to <laughs> not pre med. Yes. Although I guess I would say, Dave, Aaron, what's interesting about your stories, you've it sounds like you've always been really in the commercial side of things, and from a sales and a commercial perspective, much like being a doctor or, or pre med student, it's all about diagnosing and coming up with solutions. Yeah, I think that's 
you know, where the portion of one of my degrees in psychology maybe comes into play a little bit, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. happen to deal with people early in my career, before I went into the chemical industry, I did recruiting. So I did three years of recruiting as well. And that's along with my MBA in finance and entrepreneurship, I think has been kind of integral as I build out teams of having that background, that entrepreneurship piece, that recruiting piece. Obviously, I have a big team. It's important that we fill those critical roles with the right players. And I feel like we've really done that at Univar Solutions and have a fantastic team. That's really cool. So, you know, so I think the events over the last couple of years, the pandemic certainly brought the cleaning market into sharp focus, whether it be household, whether it be industrial, who doesn't know about hand sanitizers and all the various formulations, whether you really understand them or not, you know, if you're on a consumer basis, but certainly we saw a lot of growth in many end uses. And I think now we're seeing a bit probably of retraction in the markets as across chemicals generally, what stood out for you and for Univar during that time frame when we think about just the changes that the pandemic brought about? Thinking about the pandemic, really, I just looked at the critical role that distribution played during the pandemic. If you look at our distribution sites, you know, the 130 in North America, all of our global facilities, none of those closed during the pandemic, right? So mm-hmm. whether it was our operations individuals, whether it was our drivers, they were out there keeping everybody healthy in the economy. So our distribution sites were remained open. Our team actually was busier than they ever were, whether that was work done in our solution centers or we still had people doing technical support, our application development teams, making calls to our customers and supporting all those new formulation ideas and and making sure that we stayed in uh, place with the regulatory side. Our sales team was offering ingredient and formulation support. And really, it was for me, it was really one of the proudest parts of my career, right? So at Univar, our purpose is really to keep our economy healthy, fed, clean, and safe. And what an important role that home care played in that. So I recently heard an interview by Neil Young, and it was kind of interesting. He had said the challenges during the world pandemic, he was really happy to be a part of that. And it was a great time to be alive, despite all the suffering that happened. But I can definitely see that, right? The innovation in science. And I think in our own way, Univar Solutions played a part of that story. And definitely with our home care and industrial cleaning team, we had a big part of that story as well. So what changes do you see happening now that we're post-pandemic? You know, if we want to we want to call us ourselves in the post-pandemic world, how is that shifting from where it was for the early part of this decade? Yeah, you know, and I will probably talk about this Victoria in three spaces, right? For our home care and industrial cleaning business, um, we have three key sub-segments that have all really behaved a little bit differently post-pandemic, whether that's our home care business, our industrial and hospitality business, our, our auto appearance business, there's been different trends. So hopefully we've moved past some of those foul smelling hand sanitizers that you talked about earlier, those long supply chains for hard surface, surface disinfectants, hopefully we're past that as well. But really, I think across all those three sub-segments, innovation has been really the forefront post-pandemic. And um, I hate to go back to ACI again, but ACI in 2020, we go in there January of 2020, and it was all about 1-4 dioxane regulations. And right. shortly after that, a month or two, the world shut down. But we go to ACI last year, or at the beginning of this year, and it was all about sustainability. It was about green. It was about biosurfactants. So that trend has been huge, and that's uh, been a big part of the home care space. And in home care, what we'll talk about that first is really the focus has been around multifunctional, natural products, cost-effective prod opportunities as well. But natural has become a little bit ubiquitous, right? So I think a lot of the end producers are looking at more natural formulations. So you have natural claims in in Europe, for an example, about 75% of those products have some type of natural claim on liquid detergents. Um, The U.S. follows very closely in the 70% range, LATAM's around 50%, APAC around 40%. So you have to do a little bit more with those formulations. So uh, customers are looking to to innovate, so it's taking a maybe a hard surface cleaner and adding a, a microbe to it um, to add that continuous clean to have longer lasting cleaning. Um, it's having high efficiency laundry detergents um, that can run at low temperatures and offer odor elimination and things like athletic garments. So the consumers are willing to pay a little bit more, but they want to have that multifunctionality. 
Yeah. Um, so I'm going to jump in here because one, I think natural is a bit of a misnomer, right? So, I mean, I think that's a great marketing ploy for consumers, but yeah. the reality is behind the scenes, these are all chemically processed. It's not like I'm going and getting a leaf out of my garden to wash something, right? But from where you sit, and I know you guys do a lot of work from a formulation perspective and ha- helping your customers formulate. What's the balance? Like when we, when we start thinking about what does it take to be called a quote unquote natural or, or maybe bio-based product? Is it a 10% formulation? Is it a 20% formulation? What do you see as really driving it? Maybe is, is one question Then I've got to follow on after that. Yeah. You know, I really see this in the home care space and also, you know, the industrial and hospitality spaces. It's, it's just what our technical lead on the ADS side calls the green spectrum, right? So customers might be using very petroleum derived formulations. And can we take those formulations, add something that has a natural base feedstock and make it 10% more green, 20% more green. So it's where is the customer on that journey? And then I think you'll find the home care customers maybe a little farther along than some of the industrial customers. But can we take a green solvent and add it to the formulation. Can we add microbials or enzymes to make them a little bit more green? You know, there's been a a big talk around naturally derived LAB that would go into DDBSA, which is the biggest component of a lot of detergent formulations. So how can we help evolve that conversation around those formulations to be more green on that green spectrum? Okay. Interesting. So that's what's going on in home care. What are the other areas and trends that you're seeing? Yeah. You know, in the auto appearance side, there's been, you know, the pandemic brought a boom on off the shelf car washes, right? So you're at home, you're looking for something to do. I did it myself. Go out in the, uh, the front driveway, grab your kids, wash your car, gave an activity to get outside your house. But now since the pandemic's behind us, there's been big growth, growth in tunnel washes. Maybe a decade ago, tunnel washes were probably going to be going away, but the industry reports now are showing that tunnel washes are actually going to double in size in the next five years. And I don't know if you notice around the Houston area here, but it seems like there's tunnel washes popping up on every corner. So we're trying to take advantage of that opportunity to create more sustainable solutions um, with things that we have like kits. We put together kits for our customers. Uh, We don't do a finished formulation uh, that we sell, uh, but we work with our tier two and tier three customers um, to create things like pre-soaks or ceramic coatings or drying agents or tire shines. So what's driving this? That's interesting because you're right. I have absolutely noticed. I will say I'm hoping in the community where I live that we are past the whole stage of building more car washes. Cause sure. really about five years ago, I swear it's like, everybody's like, Oh, it's what's coming up over there. Oh, it's a car wash. It's a car wash right now. We're into coffee shops. So my neighborhood's getting surrounded by coffee shops under construction, right. but, but what's driving that car wash phenomena? Cause you said 10 years ago, you thought it was on the decline. Yeah. Uh, the pandemic changed some just consumer behaviors, but now you're saying it's increasing. What are you guys seeing? That's that's causing that trend to change? Yeah, I I think there's probably a a couple different things that are making that change, right? You know, globally, there's 8 million cars that are washed every day. That's a lot of cars. But also, if you think back to the pandemic, it was just hard to get cars that were not super expensive, right? So, you know, are you able to hold on to your cars longer and extend the life of your cars? And a lot of these auto appearance tunnel washes can help with that, right? So, you know, you go through, you have the different price points. Some of them have a ceramic coating, some offer different types of applications. And so I think that has been kind of a a boom on uh, these tunnel washes that we've seen in the marketplace. That's interesting. I got to be honest with you, Aaron. I, I basically always opt for the basic wash. Whenever they're trying to upsell me, I'm like, I'm not upselling. Just give me the basic wash. My car is dirty. It needs to be clean. Let's roll. Well, I encourage you to to try out the the high-end washes, right? So you're you're not getting things like tire shines. So when you look at your tires, they're probably not as bright. I I know my husband and kids for it. Yeah, yeah, true. true. <laughs> <laughs> but then you also don't get the fun foam that's colored. That's and true. Oh, the yeah. animations and <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. You're right. That's really that's interesting. I I just I hadn't realized that that was a a growth market at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and then know, what's the, the third area that you were going to touch on that you yeah. in terms of markets? Yeah, that would be our industrial and hospitality space, right? And so you can yeah. almost look at that in two areas: the hospitality side. So if you think about the travel that you do, staying at at hotels, getting on planes, going to restaurants. Some of that has changed quite a bit over the past few years. Some of it, maybe not 
for the best of the cleaning industry. Um, if you stay in a hotel thing like uh, clean stay programs that you, you see, um, if I stay at a hotel longer than one night, nobody's coming in and cleaning my hotel, yeah. right? So I think there may be some opportunities for different types of cleaning, some of that long lasting cleaning that you can do in those spaces. Um, you know, planes, if you get on a plane, they used to go through and use misters uh, on the planes. You don't see that. You're uh, maybe 50% of the times getting the hand sanitizing wipes uh, when you walk on the plane as well. So that has maybe not been as uh, as good for the, the cleaning industry. But on the I and I side, things like automation, I, I think you're going to see some innovation in automation. Not that you're going to get rid of custodial services, but just allow for these robots to and machines to uh, clean more efficiently. And I think you know the Internet of Things will will pop up. You know, monitoring usage for wear wash, laundry, dispensers, etc. Yeah. So I think it's interesting. I think the hospitality space broadly, as you start talking about wrapping in hotels and restaurants and stuff, absolutely doesn't feel as clean as it used to be. How significant of a decline are you guys seeing across, across the industry on that? Is that, and, and is it anticipated that it's going to pick back up? Right. So, and it, and I'm going to just continue on. So this is going to be a long question because I guess sure. my observation is there's so many micro markets, if you will, around this, right? So right. travel being one thing, very regionalized, right? Like, and I think about like from a restaurant hospitality perspective, you know, we're both in the Houston area. If you go to downtown, downtown Houston, the number of restaurants that are available downtown is probably half perhaps right. less of what it was pre-pandemic because people aren't in the office and they're not going out to eat and they're not doing those things. So I know we've seen a pretty dramatic, maybe overall shift or at least a geographic shift in some of those services. Is that what you see as well? Or, or is there anything else that really stands? No, I think that's that's correct, right? When you look at the I and I side of the business, you saw that side of the business really slow down maybe middle of the pandemic, post-pandemic. Well, when you saw the home care side, because people were staying at home, they're washing their clothes, they're cleaning more, have a bit of an uptick. Now we've actually seen a little bit of a shift where uh, the industrial uh, and institutional was a little bit slower, where that business is starting to see a rebound as well. So I think one space declines in another subsegment, you see the growth. in. so I think overall, you know, there has been some softness uh, as you looked at the second half of last year in the HIC space, but we're starting to see turnarounds in places like the I and I side where you had a bit of a slowdown post pandemic. Interesting. Good. So, you know, sustainability, you started ref referring uh, to sustainability as one of the key trends. And certainly I know you're right. ACI, uh, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, it's um, sustainability is the hot topic everywhere, as well as green and bio-based products and things that are actually driving us to a lower carbon future, theoretically. What's on Univar's sustainability agenda? Yeah, you know, sustainability is an important part of our organization. So much that we have a sustainable and natural natural products team. It's actually headed up by our VP of Natural and Sustainable Products, Kelly Gilroy. I think she'll actually be speaking at your chemical summit coming up in a uh, couple months. Yeah, absolutely. Um, she'll be there at the chemical summit, which will be great. And she's also been on the podcast yeah. briefly about a year or so ago. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, when I look at for our HIC team, you know, we have three pillars um, when we think about uh, natural and sustainable products. And uh, first is we're really focused on expanding our natural and sustainable product offerings. And we re really do that in a few different ways, right? Trying to talk to our customers about uh, what they're trying to formulate, what type of new technologies they're look looking for. We have goals within our team to uh, bring on a number of new sustainable products or natural offerings. We do formulation work to help support that. So really just increasing that number of product offerings that we can take to our customer base. Also for distribution, we play a key role in having an eco-friendly supply chain. And I think that's where we can have one of the biggest impacts. I've heard of it referred to as the green highway. You know, how do we have more efficient trucks, more efficient forklifts? How do we help our supplier community move from less than truckload to full truckload or from full truckload to rail? So I think from a more eco-friendly supply chain, I think you'll see in the coming years distribution playing a much larger role than we even do today. Yeah. Um, and so and a lot the, of it sounds like goes into kind of the whole type three emissions that yeah. uh, a lot of companies are are really trying to reduce and measure. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and then the, the third place for the home care and industrial cleaning business I see is working with our technical solution centers and our application development specialists. 
um, just formulating with more natural offerings. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier about how do you go from 0% to maybe 20%. It's just finding our customer where they're at in that journey and helping them get a little bit more green or more sustainable. And we have seven global solution centers that help formulate. And each one of those formulation solution centers has a list of projects and probably anywhere from 45 to 50 projects that they're working on. And a lot of those are around sustainability. You know, obviously it sounds like it's really customer centric, which is also obviously where it needs to be. What role do your suppliers play in this, right? Because you guys are really sitting in the middle. And and how do you help align that customer and supplier journey from a sustainability perspective or even really just kind of from an overall perspective? I think that's one of those mysteries in life is, you know, the spider in the middle of the web. How how are you navigating between those multiple players? Yeah, you know, I, I think we actually play one of the most important roles. You know, I think when it comes to innovation, innovation really does help happen at the distribution space. And I, I found that throughout my career, whether I was working at a producer like Pilot Chemical or now during my time here at Unibar Solutions, um, tier and two, three, and tier two and tier three try to innovate just as much as those multinationals do. However, a lot of times they might not have the technical support that we can offer. And so that's where we work with our customers, find what the needs are. And then we're always talking through our product management organizations, our leadership, myself, having those conversations uh, with the suppliers about what their next uh, ideas around uh, innovation are. And a lot of times we'll take back ideas to them and they'll say, hey, maybe that's something that we can help you produce that molecule. So we have a pipeline of opportunities. We take back, coordinate with the supplier base, and they come up with some sustainable solutions to help us support. Sometimes they're pushing them towards us and other times we're bringing them uh, some of the ideas in the marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I think it's uh, it's definitely a bit of a um, push and pull, so to speak, right? Because that's exactly right. The ideas are in, and the opportunities sit in different places. So, so when you think about this, I mean, I think the other unique piece to me about distributors, such as Univar Solutions, is you're serving in some ways two different customers, right? So, I mean, I think from your suppliers, your principals, whomever you're, you know, you're getting the, the feedstocks and the products from in many ways are customers to you as well, at least from, you know, from the way I see it, that they, they have certain expectations. You're filling a really critical, critical role for them. And then obviously your customers, the end users, the formulators that are using the product. So how do you guys, I guess the question is really, how do you think about the customer experience as it applies, not just to your, you know, formulators and your actual customers, but also when you look back up the value chain to your suppliers, what what's important there for you and for your business partners? I think uh, when you think about, about the journey um, from supplier to customer, it's just really kind of trying to align. Uh, I think alignment, transparency is really kind of what's key to, to the relationships. You know, I was fortunate enough uh, at my time at Pilot Chemical to see some of the best in the industry, Univar and Nexio, that have provided that transparency and really aligning on what your targets and expectations are between uh, your supplier community and your customer base. And as long as you have that transparency, I think you provide a lot of value in the marketplace. You know, I think providing those technical solutions to some of those customer challenges is ultimately what our sales organization is looking to do. And so we allow them to go out there, sell those solutions, but we have some of the best in class product management and supplier development teams that help us manage some of that conflict that could potentially come up in our supplier base. Yeah, because I would imagine that it can be difficult to figure out what products do you take forward to a customer, right? That there's that there's some tension in the relationships when you think about the wide array of suppliers that you have, the wide array of customers, and how you select products that go to certain particular customers. Can you can you elaborate on that at all? Like, you know, what's the process that you guys go through? Because again, that's one of those mysterious parts of distribution. It's like, well, how do you how do you strike that balance? Yeah, no, I, I think. What's really key there is just setting expectations really early at the beginning, right? Aligning on what what molecules, what solutions that that supplier wants to take to the marketplace. And I found the best practices when I was in a distributor manager role within Pilot Chemical from some of the from some of the distributor partners 
being aligned, transparent, setting those targets and having expectations with regular check-ins becomes so important. Setting those goals at the beginning of the year and checking in on a quarterly basis of how you're doing with that from a leadership level, with the product management teams, with our technical teams, that's where success really ends up is if you have aligned targets and goals, you know which portfolios you want to push from the supplier base. And a lot of times we have um, sales organizations and technical organizations that can be larger than our su supplier base. And so if we can take that message from our suppliers and take that out to the marketplace in the tier and two th and tier three customers, uh, we've really provided a great service to um, our supplier base. Makes sense. So I know you started alluding to this earlier, Aaron, the role of distribution, how has it changed? I mean, so I, I think number one, you, you came into Univar Solutions having been with you know, producer companies. So one, you know, what surprised you when you got into Univar? And then two, just how has the role of distribution changed and evolved? Yeah, you know, I, I think distribution is just no longer just a logistics supplier. You know, I think while that's an important core component of what we do, it's really not the only thing. You know, what I've seen in distribution, especially at Univar Solutions, is just the technical innovation that can happen. You know, I, I mentioned earlier the number of projects we have in uh, each one of our solution centers, you know, it's 45 to 50 at each of these 70 global solution centers that we have. We can do performance testing, application development, um, providing the different natural and sustainable offerings. You know, my view of distribution has really changed from where I was at at ACI in 2017 before I joined Univar. And I know part of my discussions when I took the role was, you know, some of those questions of maybe the past 10 to 15 years that I had on distribution and how much it had changed. And, you know, as part of the organized to win these dedicated market industries that we have in home care and industrial cleaning and case and beauty and personal care, pharma, food, it's it's really a, a unique view of how we go to marketplace that we're still a lot of times sharing our story for Home care and industrial cleaning, we're only four and a half years old, two, two years globally. So we're still taking that message in terms of the technical support we can offer. But I still think back, I was traveling in, in Kirkland, Washington last week, and you know, Univar was founded in Seattle in 1924, almost a hundred years old, right? So yeah. we're that old new company, right? It's I would love to know what George Van Waters or Nat Rogers would think about the organization today, because it looks a lot different. But also what I noticed at our Kent our, our Kirkland, Washington facility is two things were very important, right? It's it was great to see the history and, and where Univar has started, but despite all the innovation, techn technical support that we offer, distribution still plays an important role at those di distribution sites, at those warehouses with that logistics piece. So I think Univar Solutions has the capability to bring both um, the technical service um, and the best-in-class logistics uh, that a lot of our competition can. Awesome. That's great. So what's next for you and for Univar? What should we be looking for? For the rest of 23 and going into 2024? Yeah. So, you know, one of the, the big things we have coming up is what I call our global solution center days um, at our technical facilities or solution centers. We'll have supplier presentations, thought leadership round tables. We also have a session called Chemists Helping Chemists. So we're bringing our customers, our suppliers together at these solution centers in, in Houston, in Essen, Germany, in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in Mexico City. And just a great opportunity to talk about how we're different, like we were talking about earlier, how has distribution changed? I still think there's a segment of our customers that have yet to see what Univar Solutions can do from a technical perspective in home care and industrial cleaning. You know, just a couple other things, you'll be launching a, something called Cleaning Around the World Kit. I was very fortunate uh, for my travels, I have customers in Mexico ask what are customers in Europe doing? Customers in Europe asking what we do in North America. So we're putting this kit together to talk about some of those trends we were maybe mentioning earlier to take to our customer base. And then really for me, I'm just personally, I'm excited to continue to build this HIC brand across the globe. I work with some great people and very fortunate to lead uh, a global team of really talented individuals. And I think you'll continue to see us invest, continue to bring on new suppliers, and find other businesses that might fit our model. Awesome. Cool. Well, watch this space. I guess it's a lot going on in the world of home care and industrial cleaning, as well as with Univar. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Aaron, thank you for joining us today on The Chemical Show. I've enjoyed having you here. Thank you, Victoria. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Keep listening, keep following, keep sharing, and we will talk again soon.